Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to my channel, Horsepower Warehouse. We're gonna start today's video to talk a little bit about slippery slope with these Corvette restorations and a perfect example of such. Check out what I've done here with our 65. Uh, if you guys remember from last time, I had it over there. We had the engine out of it for a refresh. Wanted to bring it to our machine shop, Steve Keats, just so he can go through the long block, refresh the engine. The plan was to paint the engine, paint the engine bay, and you know, just kind of give it a light cosmetic restoration. The paint was already good. The interior is already really nice as well. Um, so it really didn't constitute needing what you see here. So. Um, it, it all kind of, like I said, slippery slope here. It started with little things like yellow spark plug wires and just silly stuff that we weren't happy with. But we got to looking at the car and we also keep in mind that a lot of you guys don't want to source a donor car, have it transported to my facility, and then get in line with all of the other customers to wait for a frame off to be performed on your vehicle it's much more expeditious to just purchase an already done vehicle from us. And that's why we almost perpetually have three or more frame off restorations going here on our own cars, just so we can offer them to impatient people that have the money and they want the car now. That's basically what it boils down to. Um, of course, they're limited in selection of colors and the car is what it is. We build it true to form. Um, as per the trim tag and whatever it was born with, that's how we replicate it and that's how we make it, just to ensure that it's worth, you know, investing in. Um, this car, the frame is good. You can see how, as impatient as I am, I couldn't help myself. I cleaned off a little spot with my patented process here. The rest of the bottom is not looking quite so nice, but check it out. It, it cleaned up really good. So I'm, I'm really happy with how this car is gonna come out in the bottom. As I mentioned, the paint, it just needs wet sanded and buffed and the paint will look phenomenal. We are going to blow apart this chassis. Everything's getting powder coated, um, all new springs, the shocks, re rebuild the rear end. We're gonna rebuild the transmission. We're just gonna go through the car and kind of give it the full works now that we have it apart. We made the decision that, hey, this is a nice enough car that, you know, it, it would be nice to have a completely powder coated chassis. A lot of you guys have also watched my video, why I restore Corvettes wrong. And you guys are requesting that, you know, you want the powder coated chassis with the better powder coated suspension components and the stainless brake lines and, and fuel lines and the better calipers. And, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can subtly make these Corvettes a lot better to drive so you can enjoy them for years and not have to worry about it just degrading back to what you see right here. Um, when I overbuild my cars, you know, I, I'm trying to fight time, you know, grandfather time is always creeping up on us and it's the same for our cars, you know, so I try to do my best to use today's technology, all the better coatings, all the best premium stuff that I can do to ensure that this 1960s car, you know, will be more longevic, longevic? It will have better longevity than, you know, what was ever available of that era and even beyond what is available today. I, I do things still nowadays, they're not powder coating chassis on today's trucks. It's just too expensive, um, but it's a premium way to go. Same thing with like stainless brake and fuel lines. I mean, that's really expensive to do. Um, it makes for a heck of a lot better of a product in my opinion. It's not NCRS correct. So, mm, you know, it's a give and take a lot of, if you've seen my previous video on the Lindale blue car that we have up front, that is a true to form car. It is just like a reference car for if you wanted to build an NCRS, um, but it doesn't have all of the goodies that I go when, when I do an, a frame off on a lot of my cars, you know, I don't go overboard or, or they didn't go overboard in the same way that I do. Okay, just so I can, before I get too deep into the woods here, let me tell you guys what's going on. The Jeep is getting painted the inside. 65 coupe here is already sold. We already have the power steering and power brakes installed on this car. I'm waiting for classic auto wear. And then it's going off to the gentleman so we can enjoy this car. 
I really wish Classic Auto Air would get on it. I understand everyone has backlogs right now, but usually I get my kit within a week and I think I'm going on two weeks now. And uh, it just goes to show you the stuff that I don't have in stock, it's kind of an issue. I gotta get it coming immediately for these guys in order to not have to wait around, kind of like what I'm doing right now. As Soon as I get the Classic Auto Air kit, this car, it's getting installed and off she goes. 63 up here um, completely sound deadened the interior everything is stripped out waiting for the carpet kit to come in it should be here in the next day or so you can see all of the black interior is being removed from the car this was born a red interior car so we're just restoring it back to stock um, it's going to be fantastic 63 specific red l notch carpet kit um, coming in we already as I mentioned did the thermal and the sound deadener package on this car so it's ready for the carpet kit to come in then we'll get that one done 64 here uh, we didn't do a frame off on this car we did do the paint job on it so that's why the paint looks absolutely phenomenal um, but we're just doing a refresh right now on the suspension you can see how I have the upper and lower arms out um, I just wanted to new, do new ball joints and tie rod ends and just a refresh on the upper and lower suspension in the front, really. Everything else on the car was great, but I'm, I'm picky. I'm just, it didn't actually need it, but I'm just being picky. It needed new bushings. Customer 66 Nassau Blue. Before I get any comments, guys, about it being on the rollers underneath the door sill, and we have the boss here hey. to confirm this. That is actually how it's lifted on our lifts here, on yeah. our two posts. Yeah. And if you guys watch how Chevrolet did it back in the day, I mean, they, they also, had six guys lowering it down. I want to throw one in there. I know he's going to be pissed off by me doing this, but I had a guy on, it, on the comment page says, Junior is an employee. Here, Junior owns that one. He owns this one. Hold on. Hold oh on, boy. Junior. He owns that one. He owns that one. He yeah. owns that one. He ain't an employee, guys. I know yeah. he's a young buck, but he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, yeah, don't, don't confuse being humble with being broke. Well, <laughs> I guess is what he's trying to say yeah. here. Well, he, um, these are his cars. Yeah. I'm just here to, to, basically uh, giving my opinion yeah i moderate the comments and anything that's negative i take out just because that's not what this channel is about but yeah we did get a comment from a guy that was being kind of smart but no worries i it is what it is to me it bounces off of me uh hurt my father's feelings a little bit um the, six, <laughs> the 67 here um we have everything back from steve that's ready for reassembly complete frame off car i think it's going to be phenomenal we have, we, the Nomad is in the lineup. We have a lot of the original parts that we're reconditioning. We're really sticklers about not using anything repop if at all possible. We had a lot of great parts with that car that weren't exactly perfect. So we're just trying to recondition the entire parts lot for that one before reassembly. We have a really killer set of custom wheels being made for this 59. Um, side draft car it's phenomenal i'm not gonna ruin the surprise here for this car but this is side draft weber zz4 tremec transmission art morrison four link rear end with coilovers this car is going to be i'm really excited to share that guys uh, share that with you guys on the channel here you can see the chassis here this is for my customers 66 nassau car that's on the rollers um, please excuse the valve covers and the tape on the engine so we keep everything nice and clean. But you can see how we're getting a lot closer to being where we need to be to actually put this roller underneath the body and get it off the paint. Of course, we still have a couple things to install here, like the drive shaft is MIA right now. There's a couple more things that I'm going to install. Usually we do the exhaust manifolds, the starter, the distributor. I mean, there's a couple more items. It's just a lot easier for me to achieve perfection with it out here in the wide open versus leaning over the fender um, on the car. It, it just makes it more efficient when I'm building them. What else do we got in the lineup here? This 67. Man, check out this paint on this red car. It seems like the red really pops when you get it right on these. It's just like, you know, the coupe that we have in there. Um, man, I've been looking at too many white and blue cars. I, we, not that I, I'm hating on it. It's a phenomenal color for this car, but it seems like I see so many white and blues that, uh, comment down below. I'm curious what you guys think. In this video, what's your favorite color of Corvette? 
Do you like the single year only Mossport green, white, blue, silver, black? I mean, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. I'm impartial at this point. I don't really even have a favorite. I mean, I have a certain car that I would prefer to own um, just because of it's sentimental to my family. I want a, this isn't it. This is, I want a silver 63 split window fuel injected with red interior. Um, that's the car that I, I need to have when I retire. So I will, I will make that happen. My dad would know why. That was the first car we restored together. So that's what brought me into this Corvette world. So that's what's going to probably take me out of it, <laughs> so to speak. Oh, well. I'm excited to show you guys every week how much stuff moves around in here. You, know, you guys know I have a small crew. It's myself. Sean is another technician. So two techs. I've got a guy just exclusively doing the bottoms of cars that I'm training. His name is Zach and he is bang. He is nailing it. Fantastic for not being a classic car guy. I mean, he it way exceeds my expectations in terms of an employee for jumping in with the big dogs here. Um, and then we have Mike, our detailer, who I've worked with him in the past for years and he knows his cars as well, specifically C2, so he's a great addition. But thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. My next video, I'm probably gonna do just a informational video on fluids. I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys on, you know, what should I put in my car in terms of oil and fuel and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of instruction to be had, I think, with that. So I'd probably make a good video. Probably put it out midweek, just as an extra video for you guys as a thank you for subscribing to my channel. But until next time, take care.